But if someone asked me to write a book about my life, would it change someone's life for the better? Through this whole journey, I was looking for one thing. I was, I was looking for peace. I was looking for peace, and I say it all the time. I don't believe you can find peace without going to war with yourself. You have to figure out who you are. People want to jump to peace before they go to war. And that's why, you know, all the monks and all the things that they did by running a thousand marathons in a thousand days, they were trying to find something. Mm. You know, they were trying to find more of themselves. Yeah. What's this all about? What's this journey about? You don't find it through sitting at home, flipping through the daggone, you know, you know, television channels. A lot of us believe in praying on it and stuff like that. Yeah, you can pray on it, but if you sit in a room and pray on it and do nothing about it, nothing's going to happen. You have to put work behind everything in life. You have to put effort. You have to, you have to put friction behind something for, for something to change. We, we don't want to examine the possibilities of what we can be. And, and that's the scariest thing in the world to me is I believe that so many people have died never knowing what they could, you know, what, what they could have been. You have to kind of imagine yourself after the fact. So what that means is like this morning, I didn't feel like getting up and running. I didn't get much sleep. I stretched, you know, I was, I was stretching for a couple hours, went to bed about 1.30. I was up at 6 this morning and went running. I knew that I would be here right now talking to you all, you know, doing this book. And the whole time I'd be in this little booth locked up in this little cage, I'd be thinking one thing. Why the hell didn't I go run? So you want to get to the point in your life where all these things that you don't do, they bother you. They haunt you. They, they, they eat at you throughout the whole day. If you miss something that you were supposed to do, if you're like, you know what, it's not a big deal, I'll do it tomorrow. You're not there yet. You want to get to the point in your life where everything that you should have done and you didn't do, it bothers you. And that what if mentality, like that, that, that dreamer mentality just would always fuel me. It would just fuel me, man, what if I can be, what, what if I can go from running a quarter of a fucking mile, now I, now I run 205 miles. What, what, what if I can go, what, just what if I can go and, and, and what if, how would that feel? I believe in patience. Because I know that it, it's just how you get somewhere in life. By being that monk-like mentality and being able to watch something grow very calmly, patiently. And that's all I'm doing right now. It's not about money. It's not about people knowing me. I don't care if you like me. Whoever wants to hear this, it's out there. This journey is going to take something that is going to be incomprehensible to most people. And these different people, visualizations, how I visualize them in my self-talk, you know, it just became this different mindset. I turned negatives into positives. So I would, I would take it like, who, who would even think about doing this? So it's how I started talking to myself and putting myself in a whole different category and that would fuel me the next day and I just kept using that as fuel and fuel. Through, through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, through tons of repetition, the same thing that you don't want to do, through repetition, the things you don't want to do, you develop mental, like, uh, like an armor for your mind. It always looked brutal. People waking up early and doing all these things. And it, looked, it looked horrible. I was like, wow, man, I got to start doing that. Not to get better, bigger, and stronger, but that is what's going to build me. That looks uncomfortable. That looks brutal. And getting up early, I don't want to do that. So I made this long list of things that I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. I started, like, I'm like, you guys aren't getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than, than the average human being. I was like, hang on a second. I have something they don't have. And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great, never-ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem. The, the unfulfilled potential is the story of most people's lives. It is. It is. It, and it could have been the story of mine. And my biggest fear, honestly, was, let's say this, let's say, uh, let's say, let's say you're God. And we have a big and long line of people. And I made to heaven. I'm 75 years old. I'm 300 pounds. I made to heaven. I worked my entire life spraying for cockroaches. That's what I did. He has a big board up. And you're talking to Adam Brown about his life. And you rip it down. And I'm next in line. I see my name. And I see all this shit. And God goes, hey, you say, read this, man. 
And I'm reading this list, and I'm seeing 182 pounds, Navy SEAL, Ranger School, motivational speaker, changing lives. Okay, man, pull up record, all this shit. And I'm like, that's not me, man. And God looks at me and says, that's who you were supposed to be. 